This is Silvia Patrono for CreandoTuVida.com and it's a pleasure to be with Dr. Eric Pearl, my second interview a year later, again with you, but with many changes in my life since that interview. You activated my hands. I didn't know what you were doing at the time. and then I, I still don't know what I'm doing. It hasn't <laughs> stopped me. I get home and I start playing with my hands. I feel the energy. I play mm -hmm. with my friends and my, uh, my family members and I get great results and then a year later I am at your seminar and now it's like learning how to read and write you know you, you gave me this beautiful energy and uh, I feel now empowered by your work and so it's an honor to be here really Thank you. and uh, I have so many questions that many people from our website send us and one is um, about the year 2012 how from your perspective and your experience and all this reconnective work that you're doing, how do you see the year 2012? You know, so many people feel that, well, let's say the doomsdayers feel that 2012 will be the end of the world. It won't. It'll be the end of the world as we know it today. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to necessarily wake up on December 22nd, 2012, and look under the bed covers and find that we've disappeared and we're invisible or something. It, it really won't be that distinguishable from the day before. There won't be any one given moment of, you know, sudden change. As a matter of fact, we might not notice anything for five years or 10 or 12 or whatever. And then we're, gonna, we're going to look back. We're going to look at, back at this period of change, this period where it seems that the expansion of time, time moving faster and expanding, seemed to really kick off somewhere around 1987, around the time of what people refer to as the harmonic convergence, when all the stars of the planets came together somehow in a certain way, and is evolving and picking up speed as we move into 2012. And this expansion of time that's happening is an expansion of awareness. So as I said, five years, 10 years, 12 years, whatever, after 2012, we're going to look back and say, oh my goodness, look at that huge expansion of awareness and consciousness and opening up that went on with humanity during this time frame. And this expansion of consciousness and awareness is one of the things that the researchers feel is what opened the door and allowed the presence of reconnective healing to be here on the planet because just one of the things that makes it so very different uh, than any form of energy healing or any technique, what brings it so far beyond that is that in our energy healings, as we talked about last time, we are accessing tiny little portions of energy. But when we access reconnective healing, we access the entirety of energy and it's a continuum that expands beyond that into light and information. So this opening up of consciousness is an opening up or an expansion of that continuum, which is bringing on more light, which is more consciousness, more awareness, and into information. We're just changing. We're really on the precipice of evolution as human beings. And it's like, wow, what an exciting time. Absolutely. And uh, for example, I received uh, a lady sent me a message saying, okay, I'm so scared, which you just clarified. She says, what do I teach my little kid? I have a baby. I don't know what to do. So from the perspective of a parent, what would that parent be doing that is positive during this transition? I don't know that I take the same approach as everyone. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't do anything different than I would at any other point in time, except love the child, show exactly. compassion and education, and not try to make anything special out of 2012. First of all, it's a bit early. In other words, they're a bit young mm -hmm. to really conceptualize it. Secondly, it's second nature for them, so they don't need any preparation. It's for us that we're worried that it might be foreign. For it, it's like, um, 75 or 100 years ago, if we were thinking 
there's going to be a box where you can see little people talking and singing and dancing, mm -hmm. and they're going to call it television. Everyone will get worried about it. But when you're born into the age of television, do you really need to be prepped about it? Mm -hmm. We don't need to be prepped about 2012. Yeah. Just let ourselves enjoy it. Beautiful. And it's true. And love plays the, the biggest part, I think, here. And uh, The Living Matrix, that's a movie where you're in. Mm -hmm. And Wednesday, it's the premiere here in Los Angeles. And uh, I know that some people saw it. I know that some people have seen, in, even in, in Latin America, have seen parts of it mm -hmm. in English, not yet in Spanish. And I think, you know, it has to be translated pretty soon. Uh, what can you tell me about your experience uh, about this movie? Well, The Living Matrix is, um, you can actually see little clips on it. I think you can go to thelivingmatrix.tv and you can access little clips of it. I don't know if I'm in those clips or not, but I am in the film. I think at the time they made the clips, it was before my interview with them. It has some wonderful presenters and speakers in it. Lynn McTaggart, who is the author of The Field and The Intention Experiment. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Rupert Sheldrake, who speaks about morphogenetic fields, and, and many people sort of find a connection between that and um, critical mass, you know, as we hit certain levels in the planet and a certain number of people pick up a level of awareness than the rest of the world does. Um, now, Rupert Sheldrake himself says it's not exactly critical mass, I believe, but, you know, he's, he's I don't fully understand what he teaches. I just know <laughs> that I'm fascinated when I listen to him. Bruce Lipton, who is the author of um, the, biology. the Biology of Belief, yes, an amazing, wow. amazing, an amazing teacher, hmm. plus some people from IONS, uh, which is the Institute of Noetic Science, including Marilyn Mandela Schlitz, now who's